Let's have the first question from Kevin Roberts, please. Kevin Roberts. Should life mean life for killing police officers? Should life mean life for killing police officers? Relevant, of course, for the release of the 78-year-old um, person from jail or the proposed release. Should life mean life for Louise Bors? Uh, put simply, Kevin, yes, absolutely. Life should mean life. Um, and I think this is where people have probably lost um, confidence in the justice system, actually, in sentencing. And we hear lots, don't we, about people, um, they want sentences to mean what they say. Um, and th there's no reprieve for the victims, is there? I mean, the three families that were affected by his crime, um, their loved ones aren't going to walk back in the door. <laughs> They've been affected. So why should he? Um, the, the, the payoff was, when capital punishment was abolished, that life would mean life for heinous <laughs> crimes. And too often now, um, sentences, life sentences are given out for murder and manslaughter, and people are, are let out of prison in less than a decade. Now, that has got to be wrong. And I'm afraid we've, we've got to say, who are we protecting? Are we protecting the criminals' rights or the rights of the victims and their families? For me, it's the victims and their families every time. Would you, you favour, do you think life is enough or would you favour capital punishment for people who kill police officers? I mean, we had, the, we had the debate about this just a few months ago, actually, about capital punishment, that on the anniversary of the abolition of capital punishment. Um, and I was asked the question, do I personally believe in capital punishment? And I, I, and I said very clearly, um, yes, I do. I think for certain heinous crimes like child rape, um, the murder of police, officers, the kind of heinous acts that were, uh, that, that, that were acted upon, <coughs> Lee Rigby, those kind of heinous crimes, I think capital punishment is appropriate. Um, now that's my personal view, that's my personal view, that's my personal view. Um, everybody's entitled, and, and I, I, I'll, I'll just What's make this one point, policy? David, I'll just make this What's one point. UKIP Can I just make this on one it? point, Caroline? I just wonder what UKIP um, policy was we, on ha it. we have We have no policy on it, right, on capital you, punishment. We believe, <laughs> we believe, just, oh. we don't, we don't. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, Caroline, we'll just leave that Caroline, 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 um, Caroline, the reason we don't have a policy on it is because this kind of issue, How many of the we should, can, can I finish? Yeah. Um, the, the reason we don't have a policy is because we think you should decide. Oh. Um, the people should decide. This kind of issue is what should go out to a referendum to Let the British me. people. And if I just want, make one point, when I was asked that question, I was responding to a survey that had yeah. been done. Mm -hmm. And actually, my view was the majority view of the survey. So I'm not my, on my own here. Um, the majority of people who <coughs> responded to that survey held the same view as me. Question now from Brian McVeigh, please. Brian McVeigh. Is Michael Heseltine right when he says that the great cities of the north have been emasculated by a one-size-fits-all economy dominated by London? This was uh, My Michael Heseltine's report for the Conservative Party and then this very week a new report come out suggesting the North West has this area, I don't know what you make of this place, Manchef Leeds Pool. <laughs> the city of Manchef's Leeds Pool. We're just in the last quarter of that today. <laughs> Louise, Louise Boys. Um, I think this is, it highlights, doesn't it, the disconnect between London and between that kind of political ruling establishment and the rest of us, you know, people who live elsewhere in the country. Um, and, and I think that's why people are so disenfranchised and, and cut off from um, what goes on and their political representatives. And I, I think this highlights it beautifully. I, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, we would love to see... Um, devolved um, government. I, I mean, I, th I think that would be wonderful, but not a layer, another layer of government, not a, not a regional assembly, because remember, people have already rejected that. We rejected that in the North East. Um, and why do we want our taxes going on to another layer of government, another load of politicians, you know, and, bu and bureaucrats? What we'd really like to see is real localism. I'd, you know, county health boards, police boards, but not peopled by politicians, peopled by people who know what they're doing. So on a health board, we should have the nurses, the doctors, the health workers, people who know what the issues are in their community. That's, that, that's what devolution is to me, letting local people take back control over planning and health, those kind of issues. That's what we would like to see. Localism in its real, real true sense. I didn't say
say we didn't agree with an no, English no, no, Parliament. Sorry, you, no, you, I'm, I'm not saying sorry. we didn't agree with an English Parliament. I say we don't agree with regionalisation, no, 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 which is doing the European Union's work. UKIP's policy in Scotland until recently was to abolish the Scottish Parliament. Mm. That was a policy you did have. No, How many our, people you think support that? It's ridiculous. No one's right. going, no one talks about abolishing you, anything. That was your policy. Our policy now no, no, is yeah, talking about last English. English. Change. You know, it's, it's an English, if we were talking about election, English Parliament, people need the Scottish voice. Parliament. We're talking now about regional devolution. Is that and I'm sorry, that is exactly... That, I think that's going to get a bit boring, the whole policy issue. We all know oh. that you're running scared, but I mean, you know, that's a little bit boring now. We've heard it once. Oh, so I think people the, might so the know fact coherently is, what your policies regional are. Regional government has been rejected it's by the North East. We had a referendum, and what we would like to see is real localism, like the gentleman in the audience was talking about. Local people, health services, transport, planning. Well, we want right. to see local people well, I have to say, making the decisions. Considering the deputy leader of the uh, UKIP party said that actually, you know, the NHS, you know, was needs oh, to Caroline, be privatised. Oh, Caroline, please don't bring, that has been and so, that has been so discredited. The NHS competition. You I really should get a new research, talking Caroline. about local health it's services. Really right. sloppy research. No, really that's sloppy absolutely true. It was on his website till it's about a week ago. It's real sloppy research. Right, well, it's from his website till about a week ago. All right, you're going to lose everybody soon if you go on with that. We haven't got the document here. I'm going to go on to another question, but it does affect everything that I think everybody's involved in the elections, involved in what Caroline and, uh, and uh, Louise were just saying, which is, of course, that the news today about the NHS as well and the new proposals. Dr. Matthew Atkinson has a question for us on it. Dr. Atkinson. How do we save our NHS from the perfect storm of austerity, increasingly expensive treatments, and an ageing population whilst paying staff the wages they deserve? In other words, as some people might say, how do you square the circle, Dr. Atkinson, yes? What's your view? Uh, my view is um, we've got to start by trying to make the country healthier. Uh, UKIP oppose plain packaging on cigarettes, oppose minimum pricing on alcohol, all things that would make the country healthier. Um, I assume the Tories oppose it as well, otherwise they wouldn't have reversed their decision last year on minimum pricing for alcohol. Um, and then efficiency can only go so far. You can only uh, make a hospital so efficient before you're you know, putting people back in the ambulance as soon as they arrive at the door. At some point, you've just got to get more money into the system, and we have to decide as a country, um, do we want a health system that is free at the point of access, that we can be proud of, that the rest of the, co the, rest of the world envies? Um, and if we do, then we're going to have to pay for it. Right. And if Facebook are paying no corporation tax, and if wealthy people aren't putting in as much as they should be, then um, we need to be looking at how we're going to pay for the NHS. Louise Boyle. I mean, from the report today, obviously what we're looking at now is this eight billion, aren't we, this shortfall year on year up until 2020. Um, and, and when I was reading that this morning, I obviously, you know, sat down, we started to look at ways, because um, we've heard a lot from the other parties about how they're going to try and, uh, you know, do something to help with that eight billion. So how will they um, put towards that? Um, one of the problems I think I have found is that we seem to prioritise in the NHS bureaucrats over clinicians. Um, it seems to be stuffed to the rafters full of managers. Um, and certainly the health policy group that I'm now working with, which on that group is GPs, dentists, paramedics, nurses, etc. Um, the one thing they all say <coughs> are managers, managers, managers. Um, and so I started to look at that. Now, also, other kind of non-jobs that are in the NHS as well. And I started to, to have a look at those and see, see, see what was happening but, there. But what do you say to um, the doctor's point that UKIP is opposed to... What were the measures you mentioned just now? I think it's plain packaging just and... Minimum uh, unit pricing minimum and alcohol. Price and yes. alcohol. I mean, just deal with that. I, I cannot see what plain packaging will do other than make it far easier for the counterfeiters to counterfeit fake cigarettes. Um, you know, I can't see, that's just making their job easier, I think. The minimum price on alcohol, I think is, I absolutely think there should be a minimum price on alcohol. I think when you go into a supermarket and some alcohol is, is less <coughs> expensive than a bottle of water, something has got to be wrong. Um, and, you know, so absolutely we really, we really have to look at that. But, you know, we lose two billion. Um, every year through health tourism in this country. Now, they're the government's figures, they're not my figures. Actually, Two billion yeah, every year in health tourism. Um, we paid out 1.4 billion 
in redundancies, in management redundancies, and then within a year, we employed most of them back again into the NHS. You know, 46 million a year on PR people and other non-jobs, you know, 87 million on the CQC, 48 million on Monitor. Right. I mean, they need to be abolished. Um, we need to find ways that we can make this organisation work, and the way you do it is let's give some control back to frontline staff, doctors, nurses, the people who actually really know what's going on. Does let's this, give them does a health board. Does this partly answer your question? Does it answer your question? It gives one person's view on it. Yeah. It's <laughs> 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 All right. Let's see. No, okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, no, let's please go kind of, uh, Can along I just say, this. No, we, no, no we more, no more, no more. There are four other people. You know, speak. it's, it's Caroline, really important. Caroline Flint. Up there. And if you can keep it brief, I'd be grateful. The, the man up there in the spectacles uh, uh, in the back. Cle clearly, there's no single answer to the NHS problem, and, and it sticks in my throat a little bit to agree with the points being made from UKIP. But it is about this senior and middle management. You, you, Les, you look, there are jobs out there on, on job websites and things. You look at them, and they're all for executive directors of hospitals, mm -hmm. senior executive director of hospitals, mm -hmm. assistant directors of hospitals. Yeah. What the hell did he do? Mm -hmm. They're all on 80, 100 grand a year, mm -hmm. whereas the nurses are driving into work having to find a couple of quid to, find, to park their own car to go and, go and do a day's work for themselves. Well, is the Prime Minister reneging on promises made to the Scottish people and exploiting English devolution for party political purposes? Um, yes. okay. Louis, Louis, Louis Boys. Sir, you're, you're actually, what we're talking about, of course, is a constitutional convention. And uh, obviously this is probably one of the most important constitutional issues of our time, actually, I would imagine. So, of course, we should have, like you rightly say, academics and experts in constitutional law and politicians debating this. Um, William Hague sitting there for 12 weeks having to think about it is obviously not good enough. But the reason this all came about, and, and the question originally, um, is why did they give that guarantee? They, they gave the guarantee because obviously Miliband Clegg and Cameron were frightened to death of Mr Salmon and so what they did, they made that pledge. Let's hope right. that Cast Iron Dave's guarantee is a little bit better than it was on the Lisbon Treaty but I don't think it probably will be. Um, but of course you're absolutely right and I would like to see a constitutional convention. I think that is where we should be, right. where we should be at. Mark